The two resources that I find slowing my gear progression the most in Lost Ark are the Harmony Shards and Harmony Leap Stones. Both are used constantly, whatever you're upgrading or honing, so they're going to be consumed pretty fast. However, thankfully, they're a resource that's in abundance from many types of content. The fastest source, though, and easiest, are the islands. I was able to gather just under 100,000 Harmony Shards and piles of Harmony Leap Stones in just a couple hours, alongside outrageous stacks of the other upgrade materials like the Guardian and Destruction Shards. I went from eye level 400 to 540 through all of that and have barely scratched the surface for how impactful this actually is. So to cut to the chase, drop everything you're doing and go do the islands that I list in this video Seriously. Now, how many shards are unfortunately character bound? We can see how many we have at the top of the screen via the taskbar. On the other hand, the other upgrade materials can be transferred between characters. So yeah, running your dailies to amass those every day is sort of the baseline of what you should be doing. And as you should know at this point, that's your two chaos dungeons and two guardian raids and your three Una's tasks every day. Do those on every character you have and then funnel those resources into your main. But there's more ways than just that, of course. There's absolutely insane value to be found with the islands. It is vital though that you understand that while yet the rewards are going to be insane, we can only do this once. These islands reward ridiculous resources, but once you claim them, that's it. So if you have not done these yet, you are making a big mistake and should drop everything and go do them. The islands I'm about to list simply have you go do quests on them in exchange for a massive amount of the resources we want, like Harmony Shards and other upgrade materials. To start, I'm going to go through the islands that reward the most Harmony Shards and Leap Stones for your time to effort. Well, yes, you'll also get insane piles of the Guardian and Destruction Stones while we do this, more than you need in many cases. All of these islands are located in the East Sea, but once you step over the 460 eye level and begin to head west, tier two rewards will begin, and we may come back to talk about that in the future as we step over eye level 600. I'm gonna order this for you to follow along from the south side of the Eastern Sea, leading you steadily north up towards the glaciers. Starting, of course, with Toto Silver Island, which rewards 13 large shard chests, which is a massive amount of harmony shards. That's 20,000 right there. The quest line is pretty easy and just has you follow it along, but does require that you go over to Tortoik pretty briefly. And this is ultimately an easy and short thing to do. It also rewards at the end, the frustrated emote, which will be useful for rapport. My next island to suggest then is Starlight Isle, a super fast venture in which we just go speak to a daughter and then the father and then the daughter again. And that results in the easy 10 Harmony Leap Stones of your life. The full quest line, though, is much more convoluted and will require about an hour of your time to fully complete, requiring a trip to Shushai during that. And you should absolutely be doing that, but for time efficiency, I'm just there for the first step, and then whenever I'm near the various steps around the world, I do them. This perfectly leads us just to the east, to Panda Island, where we will have a very quick 12 thousand harmony shards and almost 30 leap stones to go grab alongside a massive chunk of destruction and guardian shards. Here we have a side quest and a purple event quest, which are both worth your time. The quests have you transform into a panda and go check on the other pandas. Things get a little harder though when you need to find the three secret areas of the island, which I'll show you now. Firstly, at the top right, press on through the tree line to go through to the hidden area. Then, near the bottom center of the island, we have this walk to the edge part where we press G to suddenly leap to a hidden area. And we follow that along to the end as well. Finally, on the sort of middle left or western side of the island, there's a patch of bamboo that you can just pass through leading downhill. And after you visit the three locations, we can open up the quest and complete it from anywhere, giving us all of these harmony shards. Okay, from here, we need to pick up the extremely important Glacier Island questline, which is both the longest and also most worth questline in this video. We head west to the Pato boat and board it. And on the upper deck, you're going to find the purple quest Iceberg Inquiry, which is that Glacier Island questline you're going to want to do. While here, also, you should complete the short side quest, Becoming an Idol. This will teach you the Sway emo, which is important on the very next island we're going to talk about. It's also a good idea to buy the Song of Resonance from Treasure Hunter Igran for 16 and a half thousand pirate coins if you can. This song will be relevant in other content via the Lullaby Island. Now then, on to Dream Gull Island to the north. If you can complete the whole storyline using the Forest Minuet song and the Sway emote we just picked up, then this is another whopping 12,500 Harmony Shards. 
It involves a simple and easy storyline where we're going to help a seagull and we just interact with the backpack here when we load in to get it all started. It's a bit of a backwards and forwards storyline running you backwards and around the island repeatedly, uh, stopping eventually when you actually need the forest minuet song. And then again after that where you'll need the sway emo. Now the forest minuet comes from an awkward event on Lullaby Island like I mentioned where you need that song of resonance to complete the event. Now if you come here without any of that it's fine you still get yourself 6,000 harmony shards and other materials but but be sure to come back here when you do have that Lullaby Island storyline finished to get the last 6,000 that are waiting for you. Moving north from here then, we're going to White Wave Island. We have a super fast interaction that's going to net you 2,500 Harmony Shards and 20 Harmony Leap Stones in a minute. This quest line then takes you to the next region to the west, Rohendal, which is unlocked after you reach eye level 460 and is a huge main storyline thing you're going to want to do. When we complete all of that and get that whole area unlocked, well, this quest line from White Wave Island will also reward another 40 more Leap Stones and 10,000 more Harmony Shards. So if you've got Rohendal unlocked, finish this. Moving over to the west is the Shadow Island, which also leads to the Shade Spire, aka the Tower, an endgame activity found in the cities. For this storyline, you'll need to be at least eye level 420 to complete it in full, but we can complete almost all of it before that for a massive amount of resources even so. In total, you'll get 18,000 Harmony Shards, 28 Leap Stones from the quest line, alongside, yeah, loads of other upgrade materials. The questing is simple, find the bodies on the second and fourth floor of the tower, then go to the fourth floor to gather 100 kill drops twice. Finally, we then have to wait on the fifth floor at the very top for the named boss to spawn and then kill it. Just this will reward you a huge chunk of the materials from this quest line, but the final step asks you to complete the 24th floor of Shade Spire, aka the tower. That requires the eye level 420 or higher, so head to any city in queue for the tower and complete the floors all the way to floor 24. As you do this, you'll also be unlocking tons of other important materials and items, even permanent stat boosts or skill up potions, so this is something you really should be doing anyway whenever you have the eye level to progress the tower further. Now we can go back and finally hand in the last step for the last chunk of hefty rewards. That out the way we can go to the glacial island and that longer quest line that will reward 24,000 harmony shards and 40 harmony leap stones and thousands of other upgrade materials as well as engravings, pirate coins, silver and gold and the edge of serenity song so yeah pretty good. This quest line is one we got from the peto boat right and it takes you to the glacial island that's at the northeast point of the map. The quest line is honestly pretty straightforward and simple. You just follow the steps all the way. The problem is that it takes you a bit of a around the continents, taking you back to Arthine and has you do quite a few things as part of each step. The whole thing took me about 45 minutes for just one island to complete, but the rewards are well worth it, like I said, especially that song, which is relevant long term. From all of that, though, you should have surmised full completion of all these islands rewards over 100,000 harmony shards and hundreds of leap stones alongside thousands and thousands of the other upgrade materials. This is what pushed me from eye level 400 all the way to 540, which if I'd started with this as a fresh level 50, I'd surely have reached 460 way quicker. However, like I said, it's a lot of one-time events and quests, so what should you do generally to get Harmony Shards and Leap Stones? I'd say other than the obvious endgame content you do every day, there's three main methods that people have been using to get Harmony materials beyond the obvious dailies. Firstly, your endless Chaos Dungeon runs. You see, you can actually run Chaos Dungeons after you do your two daily runs and those are expended. It begins giving you a different currency entirely called Perception Shards, and those can be traded with the Material Exchanger, which is right next to any Chaos Dungeon entrance, for, yeah, Harmony Shard, large pouches, and Harmony Leap Stones. The catch is there is a limit on how much you can actually do these trades per week, but we can do this per character with alts as well. Secondly, you want to be using your guild by contributing daily, you'll amass bloodstones, which can be exchanged with any bloodstone vendor in the cities. Using these, we can buy a wide variety of upgrade materials, like the leap stones and of course shards, with a currency that's very easy to get, so be doing this every day. Lastly, we can use the player run auction house if you are desperate for very overpriced upgrade materials if you so happen to be rich enough or willing to throw away money on something that's definitely going to lose value as players get higher eye level. I don't recommend that, but a lot of people did do this to get ahead ASAP, so it's your call. But there you have it, a guided tour of the islands of the east that reward the crazy harmony shards and harmony leapstones as rewards, alongside yet yeah, all the other important materials. If you have 
any extra tips though, do drop it in the comments. And please hit like if you enjoyed the video so we can make more guides and other videos like this one. Until next time, I've been Hollow, you've been you. Thanks for watching. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos. Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes. Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement to take our insanity and turn it into entertainment. Yes, I said entertainment twice. To reiterate that it is nice. To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis when you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage. Is, uh, goodbye.